Welcome back to the South, brothers. Well, it's been quite a while, over a month or two, I believe, since we've had a battle here. And if you check out our last episode, you'll see that we are hard at work continuing to build up these armies um, and continuing to build up our territories. In fact, if you look at the right side there on strength, you can see a, you can see how many men are um, still on the way. Sorry, not the right side. I think we actually have to mouse over it. So we have 5,000 units coming to Beauregard, and we have how many units? About 6,000 units coming to Johnston. Um, I have attempted to strengthen these armies right here, um, but the next thing I'm going to do is take Hampton's force. People were talking about using um, Hampton or Magruder to go ahead and attack Fort Monroe. And with 15,000, I think he's got enough. In fact, we've already got that attack set up, so let's just make it happen. He's, of course, going to be slowed down by the winter, um, but hopefully he can make it through and we could break that Fort Monroe port I'm not sure how much it's going to help us because the enemy still has us blockaded, but I think we are at least moving in the right direction. Now, while that's going on, we've also got a friend up here, the Army of the Northwest under Garnett. We are pulling him back. Um, we did damage some of the enemy depots, and likely we can stop over here and damage the telegraph station uh, if we so choose. Although right now what I'm trying to do is to bring our southern general. Where is he? We do have Polk, actually. Um, getting some additional troops, but right now we're just building a depot there. Um, but the other general we have, there he is, the Army of Florida. And that's going to be Braxton Bragg, guys. We should absolutely move with him, but he's going to need some units, of course. I'm going to send him right up here to maybe deal with the Army of the West. Overall, we are going to need additional units in Kentucky. So I'm going to go here with Braxton Bragg. He's definitely going to need a um, new group. Why can't we add to Anderson's group? I guess he's just not well trained enough. Let's go here. Let's try and get some cavalry. And look at that, guys. So many North Carolina volunteers. Uh, let's get a cavalry unit. And for the North Carolina boys, we usually went with the green, right? Let's go with the green and the white. There we go for the cavalry brigade. We shall recruit them. I'm also going to go ahead and add a new... Oh, nope. Add a new group. And this is going to be under Canty. Definitely doesn't seem like we have enough artillery. So let me go here to South Carolina. And we even have horse artillery. We haven't tried that. Why don't we try out the horse artillery? Let's give these guys some tannish gray. Recruit. And I'm also going to go ahead and hire under Canty. I'm going to hire a standard infantry unit. Uh, let's get those guys also from South Carolina. Infantry brigade. And we're going to give them our sky blue look. Remember, that's our new uniform color. Boom. Boom. Not bad. All right, so we've got a bunch of armies that are going to be, of course, getting more and more troops over time. Uh, I think Polk's command is looking okay. My biggest concern with Polk is that he's not getting enough supplies. Um, but in terms of men, he's got 11,000 arriving, boys. Quite a few. All right, let's speed up here. Just a couple days, then I'm going to consider an attack, and specifically an attack over here with the army of the Shenandoah. Uh, he is still waiting on men to arrive, but it might be a good idea to send Johnston out fairly soon. Again, though, all we're doing right now is kind of waiting. Come on, Army of Northern Virginia. Let's hope that 15,000 is going to be enough to take it. Oh, there we go. The battle is on. Definitely seems to be more in favor of the enemy, but it's slowly turning in our favor, I think. And again, as far as the siege battles go in this game, you cannot play those. I do wish you could. Let's take a look. A- minus for our economic rating. It's not terrible. Alright, guys, we managed to pass the Tariff Act. The Confederate government has passed an act allowing large increases in the rates of tariffs imposed on foreign imports to the Confederacy. This act will increase the funds collected from mainly the European trading partners bringing their products to southern markets. So, just a little bit more stimulation for our economy, of course. It's not going to make a massive difference, but it certainly helps. And let's take a look here and see what else the policies are focusing on after that. I do want to continue that military focus. Uh, let's see. Militia Act 2 certainly would be useful. Now, if we halt the cotton trade... It's going to lower research speed, but it's certainly going to push support in our direction. The Europeans want their cotton, let's face it. Um, but I think what I'll go for instead, let's go for printing notes. 27 days away. Need some more money um, in that economy.
Yeah, I'm hoping that Bragg and Polk are getting the necessary resources. Um, it could be that we need to bring some additional units here just to build some supply along the way. It's a long way to travel just to get supply to one area. Let's put it that way. Let's jump over here to the siege, the Great Siege. And so far, it doesn't seem to be going in our favor at all. The Battle of Fort Monroe. That is really cool. I've never seen this before, um, this sort of setup. I like this a lot, uh, especially in case people decide not to um, actually play the battle. Um, but they just want to, like, you know, watch an auto-resolve. This is really cool. Look at that. And it's definitely going in our direction, guys. It just might take a while. As you can see there, that's a day past. And it's still going to take a while. But it's absolutely in favor of the Confederacy. We've only lost 176 men. Um, the enemy's only lost three, though, so it is still, of course, a, of course, a difficult um, grab. In fact, I'm going to send Hampton over here to assist. Let's hope he can. Oh, wait a minute. Is the Army of the Shenandoah ready to go? Let's take a look at the numbers there. No, they still have plenty of units on the way, although they are arriving little by little. Keep in mind, these men have to be trained, uh, and then, of course, they need to be sent over. So... There's a lot that still needs to happen. All right. Reports indicate that the British and Spanish forces in Mexico are already withdrawing after realizing the French are not there to only collect payments of debt, but to conquer the whole country. And, of course, this this gets the British fleet involved in the Gulf of Mexico, um, which could potentially lead them to assisting us. Of course, if the British are going to support anyone, it's going to be the founders of the cotton trade, and that would be us, of course. All right. MacGruber is getting to location. Never gonna stop laughing at that name but at least things are going more or less as planned i'm pretty sure we're gonna have to take um brag over here and we're gonna have to go right there to london stop by and attack the army of the west at some point he's gonna be a problem and i'd really rather remove that threat before he becomes a much bigger problem there we go we'll let two days pass and there we go Now, Polk is also ready to attack, guys, um, but as you can see, he is also receiving troops, 8,000 troops, so I think we're going to stay put. The Army of Indiana looks like a target, 25,000 men, but we faced much larger armies and beaten them, so I'm pretty confident that once Bragg and Polk are ready to go, we are going to launch a steamrolled attack into Ohio, Indiana, um, and pot potentially Illinois territory. We're just going to try to take this northwestern side and split the Union in two. That is the ultimate goal here. Now, in the meantime, we do have the Army of the Nor Northwest here under Garnett, poor guy. Uh, we're going to bring him back. But in the meantime, I might take the Army of the Shenandoah and launch another attack on Frederick. This is a town that we have lost and taken and lost so many damn times. Those of you that have been with us since the beginning of the series know exactly what I'm talking about. But it does cost a lot of um, confusion, cause a lot of confusion to the enemy. And it might be helpful um, overall. Let's take a look here. I want to get a look there. Uh, we are getting closer and closer to victory. It's not an easy one, but we are definitely doing okay here at Fort Monroe, and hopefully Henry Wise will be taking Benjamin Butler prisoner. And there we go. So this is not us. Um, industrialization 2 is one of the union focuses. We are going down the industrialization tree, but I think we're only on the first industrialization, so definitely a little bit of a problem for us. We'll try to get over it, though. And of course, I'm still looking at Bragg. I'm just waiting for Bragg and Polk to be ready to attack, pretty much. Got some guys over here, too, but I think this is all forts. Yeah. Now, what about in the Carolinas? That's right. We've sort of lost touch with the units here. Uh, the Western Army under McCullough and the Missouri State Guard. I have to say, the Missouri State Guard is looking pretty good. And what about that Army of the Mississippi? So it's only 9,400 men. Um, you know, I really think we could actually beat them, but what I'll do is I am simply going to add units here to the Missouri State Guard. Uh, let's see what they need. Well, number one, they need a new group. Need some cavalry. And we're going to need over 3,000 for that, which means we're going to have to use one of these uh, Georgia boys. Yep, let's get a cavalry unit. Here we go, boys. I think it's necessary, though. Uh, 
that's gonna be about it, boys. Um, you can also see the number of deserters per state, which I think is pretty interesting. That's more than acceptable for now. Um, it's gonna take a while to build up our Western armies, and I don't think they should be our main focus. Obviously, the main focus is going on in the Northeast. Um, that's really where most of the trouble lies. So let's focus there. And there we go, guys. We're already getting some of that. We've gotten 3,000 of those units. One thing that's got me worried is the Department of the Pennsylvania looks like it could be moving. Is that possible? I think we're good. Nonetheless, we want to be a little bit careful there. And maybe this time we'll head southwest instead of ha heading directly northeast like we were doing before. Here we go, boys. Taking the army of the Shenandoah. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to go for the army of the occupation. 3,500. Yeah, I'm going for it. Come on, boys. We've won much larger fights against the Union. We can do it again. And beating them in their own territory here, I think, is going to be very helpful. Um, I'm going to get the Army of the Southwest to hold his position. Although I don't think 4,000 men is enough to do much of anything. Although this guy's got a wonderful perk. And I wanted to get something that's going to improve wounded, so ambulance corps helps or improve or lower the cost of re recruitment. You know what? Actually, we're going to give him the brew of military information since Garnett is pretty much a cavalry army anyway. Um, his goal is to get more and more info for us, so let's do it. And you know what? On the way, since it is winter, you know what I should do here with the army of Shenandoah? Is I am going to stop them. And the reason is because what I can do is build a depot right here. We're like right there. How about that? We're going to have to do this for sure. There we go. Yep, he is definitely getting the assistance he needs. All right. Towards Cumberland. Let's go, brothers. Oh, look at how quickly that West Virginia militia started moving, man. As soon as we started moving into enemy territory, it seems like they appeared. We're going to try to cut them off over here at the Holidaysburg Depot, guys. We're going to definitely send um, Johnston that way. And let's take a look at Garnett. All those guys. How are they looking? Bragg is looking pretty good, too. I think we could send Bragg forward. Let's go to London, and let's hope that London is going to provide us enough supplies um, to continue moving. If so, we might go ahead and decide to attack with Braxton Bragg pretty soon. Let's see how that siege is going. Guys, if I'm not mistaken, it almost looks like it's about to fall into our hands. Uh, oh, maybe not if you look up here. Wait, no, that's the war indicator. No, the battle indicator is looking great. By the way, for anybody that knows the history of Benjamin Butler, um, at some point he took over the city of New Orleans, and he was extremely hated. He was a very hated Union general uh, by the local population. I would definitely recommend everybody check out Atun Shea Films on YouTube. Hey, make sure to let him know I sent you. That's actually how I learned about Benjamin Butler and how hated he was. Um, there were even... Um, latrines created with his picture at the bottom of the latrine. So we're about to be Confederate heroes if we take this guy out. And I believe we will also be taken in prisoner. He is not escaping anywhere. Come on, boys. And there we go, guys. The army of the Shenandoah against the West Virginia militia. Of course I'm going to play this battle. Let's jump in and get to fighting, boys. Twenty-five thousand under Major General Kelly. I'm actually not familiar with this general. Let's hope he's not very good. Um, and of course, we have about well almost ten thousand less men. I'm hoping though that with all of our experience, with all of the victories we've already won as a rebel force, that we can come through this with a pretty healthy victory. I hope so, anyway. So there we go, boys. Enemy is going to be certainly larger than us. We know that. 
Let's take Johnston, and we are going to simply push forward to Sharpsburg. Getting across that bridge is the most important thing. Then we can decide what we're going to do. But especially, like, I love this setup. If we control both banks of the river here on either of our side, they're not going to be able to flank us at all. So let's do something like this. We're still going to have to attack Sharpsburg, so you know what? We might as well just get situated. Yeah, actually, we can see their army. My goodness. Look at that, boys. I don't think we've ever been this close to an enemy army. Typically, we have to go and look for them. But that's not the case here at the Battle of the Cumberland. No, sir, it isn't. We are on the attack. We are not going to build any defenses whatsoever. We are going to move forward, guys, and hopefully smash this Federal Army completely. I'm going to begin the bombardment, of course. That's the first thing I want to do is just start bombing those trench locations. The enemy has set up some pretty decent defenses. Ah! Cancel. And actually, what I think I'm going to do, um, changing my tactics a little bit, I'm actually going to focus fire on their artillery. So sort of counter-battery fire just to remove that threat from the battlefield. And this is just one 24-pound howitzer, but a single 24-pound howitzer makes a huge difference. That thing is devastating. So we're going to start firing. It looks like they are returning fire. And we might as well um, start, start getting started here, moving the men up. Push the men forward. Cheatham, for instance. Push him right there. And start engaging the enemy. I think that's what I'm going to do. So here we go, guys. We are pushing Cheatham forward. We're going to push Bartow forward. And Thomas Jackson, we are going to push him forward as well. Right there on that, looks like a picket line of some sort. Um, I think it's just a fence line. Just a basic fence line. Let's also take Bates Brigade. This is our newest cavalry unit, guys. He hasn't seen combat yet. And we're just going to bring him over here behind the infantry to sort of keep an eye on them and be prepared for any potential um, attack. And of course, Glorious Pickett's Brigade. My goodness, we did not get him new weapons. He just arrived, actually. Most of our other guys, we did get new Springfield rifles. Um, so let's keep Pickett here, and let's instead take Kirby Smith, push him forward. At some point here, in fact, we could do that right now, I want to start separating um, and getting those skirmishers out. So let's see if we can do that here. Get them skirmishers. Beautiful. Skirmishers. And again, I am going to target the um, the actual artillery guys trying to knock their cannons out because they don't seem to have much in the way of Artie. So I figure if we can destroy that, um, we're certainly hurting them. Let's push forward. Come on, boys. That's it, boys. That's it. Get up there. Not a bad start at all. Not a bad start. I can hear those guns crackling. And we've got some Lorenzes here. So these are nice weapons, man. These are not um, noob weapons. Let's put it that way. I'm actually going to focus fire there on Gorman's detachment. Try to get a few kills on the enemy skirmishers. Um, but one of our units, Cheatham, will continue to fire at first battery. I love it. Look at them jumping. No, they're not jumping over the... the I, I was about to say, look at them jumping over the fence. They're not jumping over the fence. They're dropping dead. Our guys are dead shots. Look at that, man. That Lorenz rifle is beautiful. Although we've lost a few men here, too. I'm not going to lie. It's been tough for everybody. All right, there we go. Even our main infantry is now engaged. This is what I like to see, boys. We've got Barto, the man, up on that line, throwing everything they can at that first battery. Like I said, though, they are in pretty good defense here um, behind the trench. It's going to take a lot to break through. Well, brothers and sisters, you know that I wish I could keep on playing indefinitely uh, and never stop this particular series. But you guys know how this works. We are going to, of course, end the video now once we get up to 500 views on the previous video with 40 likes and about 20 comments. We will move on to the next episode. <clears throat> Again, I know it's asking a lot, guys, but making this entire series takes a long time. 
um, putting all these videos together, editing them down, etc. So I want to make sure that it's something that everybody on the channel wants to see. In the meantime, however, I'm going to push Kirby Smith up, and I believe that we are also going to get a skirmisher group off him, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, we are. He's still got the ability to use the skirmishers. And what are we going to do? We're immediately going to open fire on 1st Brigade and just test the trenches. But from what I think, we're going to have to break through on the right side somehow and hit the trenches on the flank. So we might just have to wait till nighttime. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Hit the like, comment below, and subscribe if you're new. I'll catch you on the next one.